the past couple of weeks I've been saying how round 14 is going to be an absolute nightmare to deal with. And to my surprise, personally, this round actually ended up going pretty well. We scored 1,759, top 2% moved up just outside the top 2k. So all things considered, I'm pretty happy with the way this week went. So the team, defense, Whitfield fantastic, as was Ridley, very composed in defense against the Hawks, Jones unfortunate, and the man we have to talk about, Tom Stewart. Now 120 is a great score, we love that, but if you watched the game, this man played at least a 135 to 140 sort of game, he was phenomenal. 27 touches, 13 marks, 10 of those intercept marks. He was flat out robbed, honestly. I don't understand how he only got 120. He got 130 last week against Port, and he played so much better against the Dogs. I don't know how he only got 120. He was by far Geelong's best. And you compare that to Bont, who played the same game. He got a 143. To be honest, I don't know how he got there. But I can't complain because he was my vice and he's in my team. But still, Stewart probably played a better game than Bont. I don't know how he only got 120. So that's pretty frustrating because Stewart deserved a lot more. I feel like Champion Data have some explaining to do there, but they probably won't touch on it. But anyway, that's that on Stewart. Oh, before I continue on, the trades I made were McCreary, Poulter, Waterman and Waitman to Bramble, Briggs, Madden and Neal. So midfield, Bont again, 143, vice captain, took that as captain. Don't know how he outscored Stewart by 23, but we can't complain, we absolutely take that. McRae had the 35 touches, but just wasn't as impactful as he normally is. And the two Brisbane boys. Lions and the new recruit Neil, just fantastic. It was a fun game to watch, just seeing them both racking up touches. Neil had a nice goal in the fourth quarter. You'll love to see it. Walsh got deboard, and the tag lifted in the fourth, but by then the damage had already been done. Bramble was fine, Newcomb not so much. And the forward line, Hall, was pretty quiet in the first half, but did well to recover to a ton. Zeeble was great. Langford, feel like he got ruined by Stringer a little bit. 29 touches, 4 goals, 180 is what Stringer got. Unbelievable game, easily the 3 votes. And I feel like it did affect Langford, so that's unfortunate. We'll have to keep an eye on that moving forward. Impey was back to his best, great to see. Madden and Briggs, pretty good as well. Before I move on to round 15 trades, the reason I brought in Madden after his first price rise was first off, he was playing, and that's huge in itself because everyone was in need of someone playing to at least try to get to 18. Second, he fit my trade plan. My last target is Danger and I made a little plan moving forward for the next couple of weeks and trading in Madden fit in that plan. And third, Lester's out for three to four weeks now, so I think his job security is pretty safe for at least the next couple of weeks. And on top of that, his break even was a negative 40, so that was a quick cash grab as well. Trades this week, pretty boring. We're going Jones to Edwards. Real unfortunate on Jones, thought he could have been a much more reliable rookie but the last couple of weeks just haven't gone his way. Just the 43 against Geelong, 29 against Gold Coast, Hammy iced up, yeah just tough luck. So he's gonna go at 243k, this leaves me with 157.5k in the bank. I do want to talk about Lockie Neal real quick. First off, if you're looking to trade him in, then definitely do that this week. 
but his break even was a 165 and he went up 1.1k. Now that doesn't sound like much, but for some people out there they might miss by 1 or 2k. And if the difference is because he didn't hit his break even and still went up, you'd feel like you're getting robbed a bit. Wouldn't be surprised if you felt like Stephen A. Smith here. We have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok, and flat out deceived. So a little sketchy by the Herald Sun. Don't know how he went up in price after missing his break even. But we're going to complete this trade. Jones to Edwards, 157.5k in the bank. Now that the buys are over, we get to see the team as a whole, and I don't mind it. Complete defense, complete midfield, just the one upgrade left in the forward line, and that spot is reserved for Paddy Dangerfield. The plan is Coleman Jones down to Reeves, and Madden up to Dangerfield. Hopefully Reeves gets games eventually, and hopefully Grundy comes back, because if none of those happen next week, then that might throw a curveball into my trade plan, so we'll have to think of a plan B if that scenario happens, but hopefully not. Hopefully Grundy's back this week. But I'm pretty happy with the players that I have for the most part. I know I'm missing a few common players that might burn me in defense. I don't have Mills, but I'm pretty happy with the six that I do have. Midfield, I don't have common players like Merritt or Steele. Of course, Steele's a player that I wanted to bring in a number of weeks back, but it just never happened. Just never fit the timeline of my trade plan, so. We'll just have to deal with that and hope he doesn't burn us too much. But I like the group that I have here. I feel like we've got great high ceiling players that can turn a game at any moment. In Bond, Clary, McRae, Lyons, Neil, Petrarca. Petrarca's been pretty underwhelming to be honest, but definitely got a high ceiling. And hopefully he can show that through the back end of the season. Walsh has been a little underwhelming the past few weeks, but still a gun. And you can excuse him for this week because he got tagged. Brayshaw would be the weak link. He was the discount trade in in my midfield, but still a great player. And the forward line, man, if you told me this is what my forward line would have looked like after the buys, I call you crazy. Hall, Zebel, Langford, Impy. What the hell? Obviously, it's missing Zorko, but we'll see how he goes with. Neil back in the side and probably less mid time. It's been tough not having him these past few weeks, but hopefully he doesn't burn me too much through the back end of the season. And once danger comes in, I think one of my main concerns would be bench cover, particularly in the forward line, because that would be Briggs and McRae on my forward bench. That's pretty worrying. And when you have the likes of Hall, Zebel, Impy in your forward line, gee, that could be an injury waiting to happen. So we're going to have to hope for a bit of good luck here, but we'll have a couple of trades for injuries. But yeah, those are my thoughts on my team at this stage. Pretty happy with it overall. Before we end things off, there might be a fair few that are strapped for cash looking for discount options. So we'll look at a few from each line. Sort by three round average, just to see who's in hot form. So these are defenders, 450k or less. Top of the list, Lukosius, 100.3, three round average. I don't think I mentioned it in my round 13 review, but after I saw the report of Whitfield training away from the main group, my plan B was that if I wasn't going to trade in Whitfield, it was going to be Lukosius. And at that point, he was 384k, and I think his two scores have been 74 and 101. So he's gone okay, but obviously we like what Whitfield's done. Actually, his first week was 72. But yeah, he was real cheap a couple of weeks ago. Still pretty cheap at 440k, but at that price point, I'd go with the man under him, Dan Houston. Injuries have 
messed up what has been a pretty good season from him. I don't know how much that shoulder is still affecting him, but he's played pretty well in the past couple of weeks. So if you're looking for someone cheap, then I think he's the guy. Adam Saad there at 9. He's okay. Doesn't have much of a high ceiling, but again, he's at that price point where Houston's right there. So yeah, Houston's the main one, but if you want to go real cheap, Nick Haynes is probably your best option. Intercept marker, we know what he did last season, although his back end to the season was horrific. He's not the worst option if you're really strapped for cash at 366k. Definitely a solid choice for a bargain. The midfield bargains, I feel like it's best to sort by season average because the midfield is a line you don't really want to mess with too much and I think it's best to see who's done it all year if you're looking for a bargain and you have no choice. Salad Mundy Boke. It's great to see as a Cats fan. Great to see the skipper killing it this season. 107 average. But I feel like for those three... So with Mundy and Boke, the body is probably the main concern because they're all getting up there in age. McCluggage, not as in form as he was a few weeks ago. Neil coming back and all that. He's more of an outside player too, so don't trust him as much. Sloan, no. Taranto, probably the one that you'd go with. But if you want a pod, then... He's definitely not the guy, because he's owned by 27%, but he's probably the best option in terms of bargain. And also, the guy at number 10, Andrew Brayshaw. 10% ownership, actually. That's still pretty pod-ish, so he's not bad. 506k. Duncan, real unfortunate. He's out for a while. And Pendlebury's probably... The other one, 424k, 3 round average of 108. I'll give a shout out to fellow Clipper fan in the Discord, in George's Discord, Seb. Saw a tweet of his with a fair bit of insight on Pendles and the upside he has as a selection. So I'll link that tweet in the description, but give that a look to see the upside Pendles has. I personally won't go there, but I can definitely see the upside to it, especially at 424k. And the forward line. Plenty of interesting discount options here. The forward line has had so many question marks for most of the season, so why not take a risk? I did it with Hall at 415k, and that has paid off massively. And then Langford, but we'll see how that goes. But I did trade him in at 432k. As for the bargain options here, Stringer is now in the conversation after that 180. Just dominant in the midfield and dominant up forward. 29 touches, 4 goals. We know he's not going to do that every week, but if he can give a solid 90 or 95 average, then... He could be a risk worth taking, but consistency and his body are the main issues with him because he has been unlucky with injuries this season, so that is a big risk in selecting him. Do you think his body can hold up for another nine weeks? You could wait another week, but he just got a 180, which means he's going to rise a lot next week, so... It's a really tough decision, because it could be now or just miss. The mid-time he got, plus the dominant form he showed, he could really be a risk worth taking. It's a real tough decision, because he's such a risky pick. Degoli's also at that price point, and he's gotten a bit of mid-time the last few weeks. And again, with him, consistency is the issue, and whether he gets that mid-time or not. Because if he's up forward, you're going to get that 68 average that he's gotten all season. So you'd have to see how Robert Harvey uses him. But I think he's got a low break even as well, so he might be set for a 
solid price rise, but not as much as Stringer, obviously. So you could probably afford to wait and see on him. Jezza Cameron, if you're comfortable riding the roller coaster of low floor and high ceiling scores of a key forward, then by all means, hop on the bandwagon. Taron Thomas has been pretty good the last few weeks, but I probably wouldn't go there. Plus, they've still got Jed Anderson to come back, so that's more mid time gone for him. Tex is probably the last one I'd look at. Also very risky, key forward, similar to Jezza. Don't be surprised if you get, in his case, a 30 or a 40 game from him. But then he's capable of going 140 if he's having a good day. So, so from here, hopefully we can make a push for the top 1k. I think my best season was 2019 and we peaked just inside the top 2k and then dropped off from there. So hopefully that's not the case this season and we can keep moving up. I think we got the players to do it, just need a bit of good luck to go with it. So yeah, that's going to do it. Hopefully you all survived this round because I know it would have been a nightmare for a lot of people. Good luck to you all for round 15 and... See you guys in the next video.